What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be doing our second foray into the bag design world. On the previous episode, we looked at the basic anatomy of a standard backpack. And today, we'll be looking at the main material types that are both used on the exterior face and the inner faces of a bag. We'll go through these materials, we'll specify specific use case scenarios for each, and ultimately give you guys an overview of what you need to know about material types in the bag design world. If you guys are interested in this type of video, stick around, you're in for a really, really good one. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. One, two, three. So starting off, as I mentioned, we have both the exterior facing materials and the inner liner or the interfacing materials on the back. We'll start off with the exterior facing materials and list them out and give you guys the specific scenarios which each of these materials will be used. Starting off with one of the most common types of materials which is the cotton canvas material. So this is a pretty inexpensive, heavyweight and durable material type that isn't water resistant because obviously cotton absorbs water quite readily, but we do typically see this used on most casual types of bags and totes. If you've ever seen a standard tote, it'll probably be made out of cotton canvas material. Next up, we have a denim material. And denim, as you guys know, is a woven type of material. Again, we'll do a separate video in the future on different types of weaves like satin, sateen, twill, denim, but just know that denim is also usable on bags. It gives this cold wash effect that's extremely popular on pants, and other types of jackets, but it can also be used on more casual type bags, so it's not uncommon to see in this space. Next, we have our straw material, and this is an extremely old-fashioned way of making bags. It's typically using straw in a braided or woven-like structure to create bags. A lot of historical types of bags use straw as the main material in the construction, and in the modern day, it's very, very popular to be used on beach bags. When it comes to leather, a patent leather is a quite common type of material to use on bags and unlike standard leather of which there are many many categories patent leather comes with a very shiny finish and the main advantage here is that its color fastness or its ability to absorb and represent color is much better than standard types of leather and it can sometimes have a nice waterproofness that is very very suitable on different types of backpack garments Faux leather is also another very common type of leather alternative that we see in the bag design world. And unlike standard leather, which we source from animals and natural materials, bags that are made out of faux leather are typically based on plastic. So these are plastic paste compounds that are made to look and feel like leather. One of the main benefits of faux leather is one, it's a lot more cost effective than traditional natural leathers and it's also typically more water resistant. In this case, polyurethane is a very common type of synthetic leather and that's plastic based, but do bear in mind that unlike normal types of leathers, PVC or polyurethane synthetic leathers are a lot less durable, so they don't hold up over time. You typically see faux leather on more lower end garments, so things that are a bit more affordably priced to medium prices, but you typically wouldn't see it on luxury goods. So if you're trying to go for a luxury market, do make sure not to use synthetic leather as it's typically an indicator of not the best quality and you want people to take you seriously. And lastly, when it comes to leathers, we have suede. So suede is typically the underside of the animal canvas. And one thing that's extremely characteristic about suede is it has this like felt like very smooth texture. A synthetic type of suede is Alcantara, and you usually see this on higher end cars. It's very good for grip, but its durability over time and the ability to clean it is not as good as traditional leather. What you see with suede is yes, it gives an amazing effect and appearance. It has this very textured like look 
and it could be quite a luxury stance, but it's not as durable as traditional leather, not as easy to clean, and it absorbs liquids much more readily than standard leather, which makes it very, very prone to staining. So it's not water resistant at all. Moving on from synthetic and natural leathers, we'll look at some synthetic woven materials. In this case, we have the king of the hill, and this is Cordura type fabric. This is a nylon based woven material that is air treated. So air runs through to create an extra added structure. And this is created by a company called Dupont, which actually created the original nylon material. And it's very famous for its water repellency, its abrasion resistance, and its durability over time. Moving on from Cordura, we have what's known as nylon pack cloth. So this type of nylon is woven in a very specific way that gives it an added shine and finish that is characteristic of nylon pack cloth. And it's extremely slick to the touch. It's quite water repellent. And at the same time, it's a very technical looking fabric. So it's very useful on technical backpacks and items within that space. One type of woven nylon material that needs no introduction, especially for those who are aware of technical garments, is ripstop nylon. And ripstop nylon, again, it's a woven construction and it's characterized by this very visible square grid that you see on the surface of the fabric. And the reason it's called ripstop is that it's extremely resistant to tearing. If you're using ripstop nylon, know that you have an extremely durable fabric material that isn't going to tear and it's gonna hold up over time. This type of material is definitely reserved for more technical items and it can be a higher end material that is gonna cost you a little bit more, but it's going to give your garment a much more refined and sort of slick finish that's going to last your customers over time. Next, we have what's known as ballistic nylon. And this is a characteristically thick and durable synthetic nylon fabric. And usually you see soft shell backpacks, so bags that you use for travel, that kind of luggage is usually using what's known as ballistic nylon. It's extremely durable and very, very easy to clean. So that's why it's extremely suitable for luggage, right? You're going to have your luggage on different types of conveyor belts. It's going to be handled by many people. It's gonna be put into many situations where it's likely to get dirty. So having a material that's easy to clean is going to be key and ballistic nylon is gonna be perfect in this case. We'll also look at PVC fabric which though not always shown on its own, can be laminated to the tops or surfaces of other woven types of nylon or polyester that you'll be using. And what this does is it allows you to add waterproofness, color fastness, so a nice color vibrancy to your fabric. And at the same time, it gives your bags extra structure and the rigidity that they need to be able to hold up over time. So PVC fabrics are a great way to accent standardized materials and to give them that extra technical look and finish that you need, as well as adding functionality in terms of color fastness and durability and water repellency. And lastly, when it comes to exterior facing materials typically used on bags, we have our mesh fabric. These are typically made out of either a jersey mesh, a lino or a gauze weave mesh, and usually you either see them in nylon or polyester based synthetic compounds. They can come in a, variety, in a variety of shapes, sizes, patterns, but they're great accent materials that can be used on pockets and liners, and at the same time, they can either be used on pads or they can be used on the inside of the garment to create extra pockets. They're very durable, and they give you the extra stretch that you need on collapsible pockets. It's not uncommon to see these types of mesh fabrics be secured at the top with a bound edge to make sure that they don't fray and to give them the extra rigidity that they need to hold their shape over time. Now that we've discussed the exterior facing materials that you see on most bags, we'll look at the inner facing materials. So as we've discussed, the construction of a bag can be quite complex, but we have the exterior facing fabrics and on the inside, we have our insulation materials, our structural materials, and we have our lining materials. We'll look at those three categories and we'll start off with our lining materials. Usually on lining materials, you either see woven or sometimes non-woven, aka knitted lining materials that are either made out of nylon or polyester. In this case, you can either have fusible materials, nylon woven materials or polyester. And what that will help do is it'll give your garment added waterproofness, 
added structure and it'll help separate your contents on the inside of the bag from the exterior in the event of damage or in the event that the bag gets stained or wet or whatever it may be. It's an added layer of insulation and an added layer of protection. A lot of these bags, it's not uncommon to see these interlacing fabrics be branded, whether it's with a repeating pattern or with other types of woven labels to accent and to give the bag more character. On a lot of handbags and luxury bags, in order to give them the structure that they need to hold their shape, it's typically not uncommon to see things like regenerated leather fiberboard. So this is what's known as bonded leather and it's usually made out of the wasted materials that come with leather manufacturing leather construction. And what we see here is this type of leather has high elasticity, high durability, and high waterproofness. So this will be used on the exterior, like between the inner liner and the exterior faces of the bag to give a bag shape, structure, and dimension. And when it comes to most sportswear type bags or more technical bags, we have what's known as EVA foam padding or ethyl vinyl acetate. This is also known as an expanded rubber or foam rubber. And what this does is it helps to give added structure, durability, and comfort. When it comes to backpacks, we see EVA come in a variety of different types of thicknesses, whether it's two millimeter, four millimeter, and these are cut to shape and they're placed between the exterior facing fabric and the interlacing fabric. And they create this inner layer of insulation that structure, durability, and comfort. These are very common types of materials that are used both on the straps and on the bottoms of bags and on the backs of the bag. So where your back comes into contact with the bag itself. And lastly, we have what's known as a stabilizer component or a material. So this is a material that can be added to a bag to give the bag more structure and durability over time. And when it comes to technical backpacks or sportswear focused items, we have what's known as a PVC coating. So this coating can be applied to pretty much most materials and what it will help do is give added stiffness to the bag. It'll help increase its color fastness, its durability, and its water repellency. What we see here is it can increase the stability and the strength of a bag without the need to add extra stabilizer materials on the inside, thereby adding extra weight and bulk. It can also be a great cost saving mechanism and a lot of minimalistic bags will feature simple woven nylon materials, whether it's ripstop, cordura, with a PVC coating on the exterior for a very slim and slick finish. And these types of bags are even made with laser cut and welded seams. So you can get this very futuristic look just by having a woven material with a PVC finish and you have pretty much all the structure you need. So to conclude, in the bag design world, you have three main categories. Your exterior facing, your stabilizer materials, or what's known as your inner layer materials, and then your interlacing materials. So these are the materials on the inside of the bag. We've gone through the main components and now you guys should have a much better idea of where to start and what types of materials to start looking at when designing your next bag. If you guys enjoyed this video, please let us know in the comments below. Let us know what other types of bag related videos you want to see in the future. Thank you guys again so much for tuning into Fit Design TV. Until next time, stay awesome.